In a stoichiometry problem, we may not be able to go from the moles of one substance to the moles of another substance right away using the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Sometimes we'll start with units other than moles. We'll have to do a conversion. And then sometimes the answer may require units other than moles. So we will have to do another conversion. So in number one of your stoichiometry problem set, we have uh, a poison gas, COCl2, and it reacts with water in the lungs to form hydrochloric acid and carbon dioxide gas. If there are 82.6 grams of this phosgene gas, um, we are going to find in A, how many moles of hydrochloric acid would be produced, and in B, how many grams of carbon dioxide gas would be produced. First, we want to start with a balanced chemical equation so that we can get our coefficients to use as a mole ratio. So here's our balanced chemical equation. Now we're ready to start the problem. We have 82 0.6 grams of the COCl2 and in the first question we would like to know how many moles of hydrochloric acid would be produced. So because we start with the COCl2 and we would like to answer a question about the HCl we're going to use some stoichiometry. So start with what you know. We have 82.6 grams of the COCl2. We don't want grams, so we're going to cancel that. And then we can convert to moles. And the reason we want to convert to moles is so that we can do our stoichiometry. So we could use our balanced uh, chemical equation coefficients uh, to switch from COCl2 to HCl. Uh, one mole of COCl2 has a molar mass of 98.91 grams. And then next up, we're ready to do our stoichiometry. We don't want moles of COCl2, we want moles of HCl. So let's cancel our moles of COCl2 and go to moles of HCl. There are two moles of HCl for every one mole of COCl2 according to our balanced chemical equation. Our moles of COCl2 are then canceled we're left with moles of HCl, that's what we're looking for, and now we can do our calculations. Multiply across your numerators, multiply across your denominators, and then solve. We get 1.67 moles of HCl. And that's our answer to question A. I'm going to use three sig figs in my answer because 82.6 is three sig figs. Now for question B, we want to know how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced. So we'll start another problem. We'll start the problem very much the same way. 82.6 grams of COCl2, we will cancel and go to moles so that we can do our stoichiometry. We'll cancel those moles of COCl2 and go to moles of carbon dioxide because that's what we're interested in. These are in a one to one mole ratio. Now we're not done because we don't want moles of carbon dioxide, we would like grams. So cancel those moles of carbon dioxide and go to grams. The molar mass of CO2 is 44.01. Those are the units that we're looking for, and now we can solve the problem. Multiply across the numerators, multiply across the denominators, and then divide, and you get 36.7 grams of CO2. In number three, we're going to do the same stoichiometry process, uh, but this time we have uh, information that's uh, in molarity. Uh, so we have a two molar solution of potassium carbonate, and we have 0 0.750 liters of it. We would like to find how many grams of magnesium carbonate will be produced. 
So let's use our molarity equation. Molarity equals moles of solute over the volume of the solution in liters. If we plug in what we know, we can solve for the moles of solute. And moles is what we need to do our stoichiometry. Now that we know how many moles of solute we have, we can start our factor label problem. We have 1.50 moles of potassium carbonate. We don't want potassium carbonate. Let's cancel that. And go to moles of magnesium carbonate. That's what we're interested in. They are in a one-to-one -one mole ratio according to the balanced chemical equation. We don't want moles of magnesium carbonate though. We would like grams of magnesium carbonate. So we'll cancel those moles and go to grams using the molar mass from the periodic table. One magnesium, one carbon, three oxygens all added together is 84.32 for the molar mass. And now we're ready to solve. Multiply across our numerators, multiply across our denominators, we get 126 grams of magnesium carbonate. This problem was just slightly different than the last one because we had to deal with the molarity first before we could go ahead and do our stoichiometry, but we did end with our answer in grams just like the last problem. And finally, let's look at number five uh, where we're going to deal with the gas. We need 3.14 liters of the xenon hexafluoride and we want to know how many liters of each of the reactants we would need to make that. We are at STP. Start with what we know. We don't want liters of xenon hexafluoride. We would like to have liters of, let's say, let's do the xenon first. So we're going to cancel our liters and go to moles. Go to moles so we can do our stoichiometry. One mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. Now, we're ready to do our stoichiometry. Cancel our moles of the xenon hexafluoride and go to moles of xenon. I don't want moles of xenon though. I would like the volume to be in liters. So I will cancel my moles of xenon and one mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. Now multiplying across my numerators I get and multiplying across my denominators I get so look at what I've accomplished here. I'm multiplying by 22.4 only to divide by 22.4. They cancel. And my volume is 3.14 liters. It's the same volume for the same number of moles. They are in a one to one mole ratio. So there's a little shortcut that we can do with gases and gases only. They don't have to be at STP but we can use the coefficients not only as a mole ratio like we did here, but as a volume ratio as well. So let me show you how this would work uh, when we solve for uh, the other reactant, the fluorine gas. I'll start with my 3.14 liters of the xenon hexafluoride. And I can cancel my liters of xenon hexafluoride and go to liters of fluorine directly by using the coefficients. Three for the fluorine and one again for the xenon hexafluoride. According to Avogadro's hypothesis, one mole of any gas will occupy the same volume as one mole of any other gas at the same temperature and pressure.
So we can use, again, our coefficients as a volume ratio for gases only and a mole ratio as well. We get 9.42 liters of fluorine for the answer. So the shortcut will come in handy uh, for, again, gases only, and they don't have to be at STP. They could be at any constant temperature and pressure.